to Pastor Connie's Couch of Creativity. Today we're doing another episode where I'm going to go back in time and show you an already recorded lesson. We're taking one more week to try to figure out our fall schedule and then stay tuned because at some point there'll be a brand new video on here. So enjoy a video from the past and have fun and I'll see you next time. This is Pastor Connie here, and today we are going to be hunting for Jesus. We have a lot of activities planned, and I hope you're ready to go on a safari with me while we're on the look for Jesus. So before we start, I need to get all the supplies that you need, and they are our worship bulletins. Maybe last week you guys tried using this new code on the website. If you want to do that again, they are available for you after we after our video. Go onto this website and there's lots of games and activities you could play. You can download that. But most important is to download our resource pages because we're going to be doing a little craft in just a minute. And there's three pages. There's a page that looks like this. And there's a page that looks like this. And there's a coloring page. The page is kind of pixely. It's not the greatest quality. So if you like to color pictures, you're more than welcome to color. But if you're like, eh, don't worry about it. And lastly, keep collecting your coins. So my coins counts. I'll be giving you more information about what we're going to do with these coins in a few weeks. But keep collecting it. And we're going to get ready to have some fun. Are you ready? Oh, oh, and also you need other supplies. You need two toilet paper rolls pair of scissors, tape, and markers or crayons, some kind of coloring utensil. Could even just be um, a pencil. Alrighty, and then when you get all your supplies, then come on back and we're gonna start off with some worship and start having fun together. Alrighty, see you back in just a minute. Our first song today is called, I Get Down. So before we get down, you need to get up. So stand up out of your chair, and here's how the song goes. The chorus, every time I say, I get down, I need you to drop. I get down, and then he lifts me up, I get down. He lifts me up, I get down. He lifts me up, okay, so up, down. We're gonna get a good leg workout this morning. The, chor the verse goes like this. In my weakness, and make your arms weak, Ugh. he is, strong in your darkness he shines through when you're crying he's your comfort when you're all alone and pretend like you have a buddy over here and a buddy over here oh and go he's carrying you go like he's like you got your arms around some good friends because you're not alone jesus is with us even when we feel like we're alone okay so in my weakness, he is strong. In my darkness, he shines through. When I'm crying, he's my comfort. When I'm all alone, he's carrying you. Okay, so let's try it. Get down and get back up. Here's how it goes. I get down, he lifts me up, I get down. Thank you. 
we're gonna do one more song. All right, our next song is called Open the Eyes of My Heart, Lord. Today, like I said earlier, we are on a, a safari hunt looking for Jesus. Sometimes Jesus is right in front of us and we don't even recognize him. So we need to have eyes that are opened to be looking for where Jesus is. So today our song is called Open the Eyes of My Heart. Um, and the chorus, I want to show you this. The chorus goes like this. Holy, holy, holy. So take your two fingers like you're cutting. And this is actually the letter H in sign language. And then take your other hand like this. And you're going to go like this or like it's hovering over the top of your hand. And this actually means holy in sign language. So when we say the holy part, I want you to take your two hands and um, go holy, holy, holy. Holy, 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 I want to see you. Holy, holy, just like that, okay? So holy, I want to see you. So let safari and in our our scripture this morning open our eyes to see you amen so before we go on our safari you need your own pair of binoculars so what you're going to need are your two toilet paper rolls are you ready 
So maybe you, hopefully you've already downloaded our little paper here and there's a dash line across the edge. So you're going to take your scissors out and cut along that line. Do, 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 do. Okay, now we have, this is our memory verse for today. It says, then their something were opened and they recognized him, Luke 24, 31. What do you think is missing? Then their ears were open and they recognized him? Then their fingers were open? Can your fingers open? No. Their eyes, right. So what we're gonna do is get your pins out and we're gonna draw our eyeballs on here. So come here and let's see. So now I'm gonna draw a pair of eyes right there in the middle. So I'm gonna do oval eyes, woo. My eyes are gonna be going sideways, woo, like I'm surprised, woo. And maybe I'll, well, that's all I'll do. Just like that. But then I'm going to also, I have some crayons here and I'm going to color my safari binoculars. What color do I want? Let's do purple, purple's a fun color. And I'm going to color. So feel free to get a crayon and decorate. This is gonna be your binocular. Maybe let's do a bright orange, I like orange too. Ah. Orange, 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 orange. Let's do this orange. Nah, not that orange. This is a good orange. This is a bright orange. Yeah. Just like that. There's no wrong way to color. Color, 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 color. I need one more color. Let's see. Let's do a, let me think. Maybe I'll do a green. Green's a good safari color. All right. And once you're done coloring, you're ready to put it together. This next step might be a little tricky, but we're gonna try it. You're gonna take your two toilet paper rolls and these are gonna be the binoculars that you look out of, okay? But we're gonna tape them together. So get your tape out and get a nice long piece of tape. We're gonna tape these together, just like that. And then I'm gonna do a few more. If you have a, a sibling, a sister or brother with you, you could always work together so that some somebody can hold it while the other tapes it. But as you can see, you can do it all by yourself too. Turn it around. Okay, now we have our toilet paper rolls all secured with tape. Now, here's what we're gonna do. So you have this very um, obvious center we want the center part to go right on the middle. So you see how that, it's right in the middle of your toilet paper rolls. So once you have it in the middle, then put it face down, eyeballs down, and take one side and fold it around and tape it on. There's gonna be some overlap and that's okay. That'll hold it sturdy. At least three pieces of tape. Okay, then pick up the other side and fold it around. Another three pieces of tape. Let's see how it looks. Oh, now I have my own binoculars. Oh, I can see you! You ready to go on a safari? Blimey, it's time for a safari. You ready? Do you have your binoculars? I have these lovely ones, but I also have these fancy ones. I'm gonna use my cool one. We are going to walk through the safari of my backyard and look for a bright pink elephant. Get your 
binoculars and let's see if we can find it. Follow me. Right, pink elephant. Right, pink elephant. There. No, don't see it. Right, pink elephant. Right, pink elephant. Right, pink elephant. Perhaps I shouldn't be as loud. Maybe we need to sneak up on the elephant. for the wrong animal. There's not a bright pink elephant in my jungle. There is a shark and there is a tiger and there's a leopard. Let's look a little closer for a shark, a leopard, and a tiger. They're all brown in color. So see if you can find them in my jungle. Oh, the shock. Sharks love blueberries. Let's go look in the blueberry plant, eh? Blueberries, blueberries. Oh, it's a shark, it's a shark. Oh, he's going to eat my blueberries. All right, last we have a leopard. The most fearsome creature. Of all is the leopard. He hides with his little spots and his little whiskey whiskers. Can we see the dangerous leopard? Can you find it with me? I can't, I can't see the leopard anywhere. Do you see? Can you find the leopard? What? Ah, <gasps> oh, the leopard! We have spotted the leopard. All right, that was a great safari. Let's go inside and hear our Bible story. Our story today is about Jesus appearing to his disciples on the road to Emmaus. Have you ever read a story and you got to the end of the story, maybe you watched a movie, where the ending was so not what you expected that you had to go back and reread the book or rewatch the movie just to see for sure how it all fit together? Well, in today's story, Jesus appears to his disciples. So a few weeks ago, we talked about Jesus appearing to Mary on Easter Sunday. And then last week, we talked about Jesus appearing to his um, disciples. And today he appears to some more of his disciples on the road to Emmaus. This comes from the book of Luke. Remember there's four gospels. The gospels are the four books that talk about Jesus' life on earth. And remember our fun trick to find the gospels? We take our Bible and we split it in half. And we usually fall in like a Psalm or Isaiah. Take the second half and we split it in half again. And we usually end up in Matthew, Mark, Luke, or John. And we want to be in Luke, Matthew, Mark, Luke, which is the third gospel. So I'm going to look for Luke chapter 24. And that's where our story takes place. So our story is about these two men who are leaving Jerusalem, um, walking back to this place called Emmaus. So there's these two guys. Okay, here's one guy. And here's another guy. And they're walking to Emmaus. And as they're walking, Jesus actually approaches them while they're walking and starts walking with them. And they're having this big discussion about, oh man, I can't believe what happened in Jerusalem. And they're talking about Jesus. And Jesus, knowing that they're talking about him, is kind of like, hey, what you talking about? Just to see what they say. So let's see. Um, their faces were downcast. And they said, are you the only visitor in all of Jerusalem who doesn't know the things that have happened in these days? And Jesus says, what things? He's totally like playing with them. 
And then the guy says, about Jesus of Nazareth, he was a prophet, powerful in word and deed before God and all the people, the chief priests and our rulers handed him over to be sentenced to death and they crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one who was going to redeem Israel. So they kind of lay out to Jesus what their hopes, what they hoped Jesus was going to accomplish. They hoped that they were going, that Jesus was going to redeem Israel. And he actually does, but not the way that they had expected Jesus to. Kind of like our safari, we were looking for a pink elephant and we didn't see it because we were looking for the wrong animals. The disciples and all the people who were, were, were living with Jesus while he was on earth were looking for a pink elephant. And Jesus was right in front of them and they didn't see him. So they start walking along this road and the, the, these guys say there were some women who went to the tomb and they saw the resurrected Jesus. So we went to the tomb and we got there and we saw the empty tomb, but we didn't see Jesus and we're not sure if maybe they know if they're telling the truth or not. We just don't know. And Jesus says this in verse 25, how foolish you are and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Did not the Christ have to suffer these things and then enter to glory? And then verse 27, and beginning with Moses and all the prophets, Jesus explained to them what was said in all the scriptures concerning himself. So while they're walking, um, Emmaus is about 10 miles away from Jerusalem. So while they're walking these 10 miles, Jesus is explaining, starting with Moses back in Exodus, all the ways that Jesus has been part of scripture from Moses to now. So he's talking through all the gospels, all the, all the Old Testament, the law, showing where Jesus is at. Kind of cool. And then they get to Emmaus and it's kind of dark. And Jesus is going to keep walking. And these two guys are like, hey, come on in. You should, we'd love for you to, to sit down and like have a meal with us or stay overnight with us because it's getting dark, it's getting late, and you can take off for wherever you're going the next morning. So Jesus says, okay. Um, and in verse 30, when, when he was at the table, Jesus, he took bread and he gave thanks and he broke it. Now, if you've been with us during some of our communion services, that's exactly what Jesus did with his disciples on the Last Supper. He took the bread, he blessed it, and he broke it. And then he gave it to them. And then, verse 31, this is our verse for today. Then their eyes were opened and they recognized him. And then Jesus disappeared from their sight. Jesus, they suddenly recognized Jesus in the breaking of the bread as he gave it to his disciples. Jesus was with them the whole time, but they didn't see him because they weren't looking for him. They thought he had dead. He was dead. He was gone. For sure, he wasn't walking down the road to Emmaus. Why would Jesus be doing that? How many times are we looking for Jesus maybe in our life, but we're not actually looking for who Jesus is showing himself to be? So our story and our hope today is that we can open our eyes to see Jesus who might be right in front of us. Jesus might be in front of us in the form of our moms who's making our meal. She's loving us like Jesus would love us. Maybe Jesus is working for us like our dads or our grandparents who are maybe people that are working to provide us uh, money so we can have food to eat. How are you representing Jesus so that others can see Jesus in your life? So our prayer is that our eyes would be open to see. So we wouldn't be looking for pink elephants. We'd be looking for the real thing who might be right in front of our eyes. Today, I don't know if you've noticed, but all through our story and all through our singing and our craft together, I have had a crayon behind my ear. Did you see it? You might not have seen it because you didn't know to look for it. So, as we go through our week, I want you to look for Jesus. Just like we're looking for this crown. We didn't even see the crown because we didn't know to be looking for it. So let's look for Jesus in our lives and see if we can see him this week. And email me or text me and tell me, Pastor Connie, I saw Jesus in this action. Or as I saw my sister and brother playing or some way that you've seen Jesus in your life. Alrighty, so that's our story today. Let's go ahead and pray and then you can log on to that website 
um, for more games and activities that coordinate with the Road to Emmaus story. Let's pray. Jesus, we thank you that you are with us, that you are with us even when we don't recognize you, even when we don't see that you're with us, you're with us. I pray, Jesus, you would open our eyes to see you and we would be amazed to discover that you have been walking with us on our road, on our journey all this time. Give us eyes to see you and I pray we would see you and other people around us and that we would be your presence to people, to our own families while we're sheltering at home. And like that song we first sang, when we get down or when we're discouraged, when we're sad, that you would lift us up and you would be our comfort and be our hope. Open our eyes that we might see. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks for joining me this morning. Have a great day.